in the next nine minutes, you're gonna figure out exactly what to expect from every data science interview question that you will ever have. Six types of questions they could actually ask you. So I'm gonna give you some examples as well real examples of questions from tech companies and startups that I personally interviewed for. Grab a notebook and let's get straight to it. Hey guys, I'm Priya. I'm a data scientist at a tech startup under Uber called Drizzly. I majored in astrophysics at the University of Chicago. I love posting education things on YouTube. So don't forget to subscribe if you're new here. And big thank you to Datacamp for sponsoring this video, but more on them later. Let's get straight into the six different kinds of buckets of data science questions that you're gonna see throughout your interview lifetime. There's generally gonna be three to six rounds, starting from an initial coding assessment, SQL stuff, to case studies, to behavioral questions, to rapid fire questions, even whiteboarding sessions and full-on presentations of your take home. So there's a lot to get into. The first bucket is gonna be your coding assessment or screening assessment. I'd like for you to think of this as almost like a very basic data science skill, just showing them that you're even qualified to be applying to this role. So usually they're gonna just send you an assessment to finish on your own time or a timed assessment. This is probably gonna be like one of three things based on my experience. The first is a SQL question. They just want you to do some joins and they're gonna give you an assessment that's mostly SQL, pulling your own data, doing all of the data manipulation sometimes even as complex as window functions and self joins to manipulate the database you're working with. I don't think it's like actually complicated stuff, but you will have to brush up on your SQL for the initial assessment. Usually this is something that's the easiest part of data science. So they ask you really quickly just to filter out people who may not be a good fit for the role. The second type, which I think is the most prominent is a Python lead code question, just like a self assessment that you're gonna have to do within 20 to 30 minutes. I'll go into examples in a minute. The third, and this one is extremely common when it comes to startups, but sending you a basic data set, something from the company that you're actually gonna have to work with. And they're gonna ask you to do something very basic with it. So an example of this, which I've gotten as a first round, almost like a screening interview, was a full complex data set that wasn't cleaned at all. So we had to clean the data set and throw it into a simple regression model. Then we had to use different statistical measures to explain what we see from the regression. Cause you're putting real data through this regression that the company is giving you. So what are the results? And it's not just, hey, this is an 89% accurate regression model, which means nothing. It's really about whether the variables are actually linearly correlated. Why are they? Why are they not? It really depends on the kind of data. Is it CPG data? And you have to use the right metrics to measure the impact of this. Maybe root mean squared error is a better metric because it's in the same unit as the y-axis. Maybe everything is a price, right? And you need to know what the error bar is for a plus or minus in the price. So then you would use RMSE instead of MSE or R squared. So there's like a lot of different metrics that you could potentially use. So I think that's just to see if you could do a very basic thought experiment and use data from the company itself. But you know, a lot of companies are even worse, especially if it's a larger company, they're just gonna give you a lead code question. Generally like a lead code easy that just requires like a while loop or maybe a recursion, but I don't think you would see something like that in your first round. One first round lead code question I got in the past was happy numbers. It's generally just gonna be an algorithmic question where you have to talk through your thought process or if they just send this as a screening assessment, you just do it and send it back to them. The next section is behavioral questions. I think that this is gonna be incorporated throughout all of the rounds you potentially have with the company. If they have a good culture, they're gonna ask you a lot of behavioral questions. That's something you should keep an eye out for because some companies barely ask me behaviorals and they were bland companies. It was not fun interviewing with them. So for behavioral questions, there's a very easy strategy. It's gonna take you maybe two to three hours of your time to prep for this and you will be done after that. So I'm gonna add a couple links of the most common behavioral questions you can get in interviews across tech down below. And for every single question, think of a story or a project from your past that would answer the question. Like the way you prepare for behaviorals is by knowing your answer before they even ask you. If they're gonna ask you about a project that you had to extend deadlines for because things didn't and go right. That's something that like I've been asked so many times in different ways. I have a specific story for that. I have specific reasons as to why it got delayed. I had results of like how we fixed that delay and the planning process that I went through when 
unexpected things happen throughout like a larger data science project. So you really have to have a game plan for how you're gonna answer these questions. A great method is just the STAR method. You wanna answer the question, but you also wanna give them extra information about yourself in the process, about how you're always on top of your stuff, what the results of your projects are, and how you think about others in the company and how you're a collaborative person. So having a different story and a different project associated to different questions is really gonna help you in the preparation process. Process, and you have the ability to communicate your results, the problems you face. Communication is very important in data science. So yeah, that's it for the behavioral section. Just want to take a second to thank our sponsor of the video, DataCam. This is such a great platform to learn everything you need to know for data science interviews, brush up on topics that you already know, but also really within a four hour course, learn an entirely new concept in data science that could help you stand out, whether you're going to use it to create a new project and put it on your resume, or whether it comes up in talking points with your interviewer. Being a self-starter is the most important thing in data science, and there's always so much to learn. And DataCamp offers 350 specialized courses for you to really build up your data science toolkit. Not just reading the concepts, but really applying those concepts in a very data-driven way with different data sets that are already integrated into the platform. So if you are interested in using DataCamp, definitely use my link in the description and the pinned comment below to get the first chapter of any data camp course for free. Thanks so much data camp for sponsoring this video and back to the rest of the stuff. The third type of initial first round style things that they can ask you is maybe like a one on one with the hiring manager where they kind of ask you rapid fire questions to really assess whether a you're quick and b you know the statistical concepts because right now I feel like in the field of data science everything is so automated like import scikit-learn, import pandas, but you need to know how to use those tools and when you're using a tool you need to know about the mathematics behind it and I feel like that's something that isn't equal across the field. Testing people on statistical concepts, the linear algebra behind the machine learning algorithm, stuff like that. So I'm gonna give you three examples of exactly the questions I got. Like there was one interview with a company that was about to IPO so I think that's why they were extremely technical but it was just an hour of them asking asking me very, very specific stats questions. One question is how would you describe gradient descent to a baby? Yes, someone literally asked me that. Really here, I would just say it's about connecting, you know, gradient descent is the minimizing function that we use in linear regression. So you attach it to that. When you talk about what the concept actually is, you're just finding the local maxima or the local minima. So you can kind of like equate it to a hill. I'm sure you've seen the images before of gradient descent where it literally looks looks like a hill in 3D. So you could just talk about like trying to find the highest hill or the lowest point in a flat plane to a child, but it was weird. Like I had to take a second because I've never heard that as a question before. And a way you could really just rapid fire, learn the stats behind things or brush up on stats is just watching StatQuest on YouTube. I watched all of the StatQuest videos about every machine learning algorithm just to ensure I remembered the exact definition of boosting versus bagging. Cause they're gonna ask you stuff like that. Another example of a question I got in the statistical rapid fire style Round was about which ensemble method you could run in parallel to make the model run faster. Essentially between like random forest and gradient boosting algorithms and gradient boosting algorithms iteratively build upon each other. So you can't run those in parallel. And But for random forests, you actually build all of those trees out individually. And one tree does not depend on the other tree. And you take the average of all of that to get to the end of the model. Random forests are something that you can build in parallel and the model could run faster if you parallelize that. But with gradient boosting, that's not an option. So that's something you do have to think about when you're putting a model into production, right? Maybe gradient boosting and random forest, they're both the same level of accuracy for the data you're going for in a classification model. But there are a lot of things that you have to think about past that. And those are the kinds of questions that they might ask you in a rapid fire round. It was a little intense. The second round, I would say like going into the second round, there are two buckets of things. I would say you could have like a very large in-person coding round, like probably a Python lead code medium where you finish behaviorals, you finish the initial assessment, rapid fire rounds. They know you're good at the stuff you do. The next step, 
building upon your foundation is really like, how can you think through larger questions? So it's going to be like a leak code medium, but there's going to be three parts to it. And you can't answer the third part without doing the first two. That's really where if that's in person or on video, you have to talk through every single thing you're thinking through. You have to comment in your code. You have to ask a lot of questions about the data. If you don't understand something, you ask them. This is really about whether you can figure out your way and ask the right questions because data scientists are independent, right? And while your team is always going to be there to help you and help answer questions, you need to know exactly what to ask and how to collaborate with someone else. Or the next bucket, which I think this is more common, is the data science case study. This is really just like a whiteboarding pseudocode situation, maybe not even pseudocode, but more whiteboarding. They could give you an issue they're having at the company, tell you what kind of data they have at the company and what you would do with that data to reach an answer. An example would just be supply chain issues out there. There are so many supply chain issues. So if you're working for a company that has a lot of store data, how would you create a model that could potentially identify supply chain issues or inventory levels? You have to ask them the right questions about the data that you have. They might give you the data and you could just like pseudocode all of this out knowing the features, or they could give you a hypothetical and ask you what kind of data you would need to build what kind of model to fix this issue, right? So this is really where you sit down, you have a quick brainstorming session, ask them for a minute, write down all of your thoughts, ask them the questions and start building out a general framework to tell them how you approach a problem like this. This is something that I've had in several different companies. It's really to show them that you can figure out how to get to a problem in an abstract way because data science is abstract until you have all the data gathered. So that's an example of something just case study wise, almost like a consulting interview, but much more rigorous. Just a quick interjection before we get into the final round stuff, which is the most exciting stuff. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like the video if this has helped you in any way so far. Thank you so much. The final round, I would say almost every single company since COVID started has just moved to take homes instead of doing like a weird like in person or like on Skype like coding exercise. It's just really awkward coding when people are looking at you. So a lot of people do take homes now. And I've had so many take homes, like, you know, each take home takes about five to eight hours. But this is almost a mix of the case study work I talked about as a potential question or pseudo code thing that they could ask you. They're gonna give you a bunch of data. They're gonna give you a problem and they've seen this assessment done 20 times, 30 times, 40 times, right? They wanna see how you're gonna approach this. And it's probably with data from the company itself. So you're looking at real data, potentially solving out a real project that was an issue at the company or potentially is still an issue. This is where you really have to take a good methodological approach where you comment in all of your code, you're as clean as possible in the pipeline and you follow all of the steps. Usually this is a machine learning based question that they ask you. So the first thing, data cleaning, data exploration, like the first thing you need to do is explore the data, look at the correlations within the data. That's step one in a Jupyter notebook, right? Make sure you use Markdown, make everything clean and understandable, put some visuals so that they know that you've really thought about this. Then go into the data cleaning aspect. Instead of just randomly like throwing in all of the things to clean the data, why don't you create little functions? Each one cleaning a different part of the data. And you can always reuse this for like other take homes, right? I'm just saying. Talk about why you're picking specific models in the Markdown and then go into the metrics of evaluation. These need to be thought through. You can't just pick whatever random metric like accuracy score. Maybe precision is more important than recall in this case. So plotting out confusion matrices and, and you want to distinguish yourself from other people. So I think adding as much detail as possible in these take homes is important. So I actually had a project and I don't think I could show you the exact project because I signed an NDA, but it was like a diamond project where they gave me a lot of data regarding diamonds with like probably 14 to 15 different columns and it was a regression problem. So it was a lot of data cleaning, data exploration, putting it into different regression models. But also it was really interesting because like other than commenting in, in code just for like design choices, because there were so many design choices in the problem, there was actually a linear optimization part towards the end of it because you had to increase profitability using the diamond data. Like after the regression, now that you have that column of prices, you have to optimize it for profitability based on how much it costs, how much you can sell it for 
for and you can only sell a certain amount of diamonds. I think the reason I got to the end of this is because I did like a linear optimization method. Instead of just giving them a rough estimate, which you could do, the biggest problem was the regression. I took it a step further, used some linear optimization methods to choose the exact number of diamonds to increase profitability. And I also added in a lot of constraints just to make the problem as realistic as possible, make it a model that they could possibly actually use. Cause like, I know this isn't for diamonds, right? They're gonna replace diamonds with something else like mortgage-backed securities. And then you had to write a case report for that. That was a two page case report. And it took me like, you know, eight hours probably a good example of what you would see towards a final round you write the case report and then you talk to different people about it you talk to different stakeholders like a product manager a data scientist a software engineer you describe what you did very differently to different stakeholders because they all want to know different aspects like of course your data science manager is going to want to know all of like the design choices why did you do this instead of that what are the packages you imported why did you what were the metrics of evaluation but then a software Software engineer is going to want to know how are we going to actually run this in production or how can I help you with the infrastructure we have while a product manager is trying to figure out timelines figure out how a client a potential client or the company is going to use this in their pipeline so you need to know how to talk about your take home to different stakeholders but I would say that's probably the last bucket I hope it gave you like a holistic idea of what a data science interview could entail because I feel like there are so many moving parts and I think that in general these are the different buckets that you're going to get questions within. Now you know what you kind of want to prepare for and tackle it one at a time. I hope this helped. Let me know if you have any more questions. If you have video ideas, let me know. Thank you so much and I will see you at the next video.